Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Mapfix. Got another video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well. We got this MacBook in uh, for repair. That's doing unwell. And this is the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. You guys didn't already know, we are located right outside Washington DC in Northern Virginia. If you guys are interested in sending in your MacBook for repair, we have a mail in option. All the links in the description down below for how you can send us your MacBook. And when you open it, it actually powers on, but it doesn't go right to an OS. It will go to startup options and it will be stuck there automatically. So we're in the options here. The customer actually wiped the OS and it keeps doing this over and over again. They thought that would fix it. They thought there was maybe a problem with the operating system itself there. So they went to the recovery mode because you can go to recovery options here and um, it will actually boot fine or it will boot to the recovery options. It does that all the time, no problem. Um, but there isn't actually like an OS installed in here. So we need to see really what's going on. When you go to the startup options, usually you have to hold the power button. And if I hold the power button down, I should be able to power off this device, right? Or if I even double tap or triple tap, I should be able to get voiceover, which does not come on. All right, so I'm gonna hit shutdown. And now I'm gonna go ahead and try pushing uh, just the power button. All right, so it's off, there's no backlight. So I'm gonna push the power button and nothing happens. On these Macs, you can open the lid or you can also usually push like a keyboard or a trackpad and it should come on, which it does. It looks like there's something going on with the power button. Let's go ahead, open up. Let's take a look at the power button area and let's unplug it. So the power button is over here, right? This is our power button and that must mean the power button itself must be connected over here too, right? And that is the case. This is your Touch ID cable, and it looks a little bit dark. Usually that means if it's a little bit dark, there's either a burn or it's probably some type of liquid damage. So we need to remove this so we can go ahead and take a look under the microscope. We need to remove the board. So let's go ahead and remove the board. We'll take a look at it further. Okay, so lift up the board, and let's also lift up the Touch ID. Okay, so I'm going to take it out, and uh, here it is. That's your Touch ID. Let's go over to the microscope and take a look uh, at it further. Let's see what's going on. Switch it over. You see in the corner, it looks to be a little bit wet, but our pins look to be healthy here, so we look to be fine. So let's go ahead and clean this. Clean this off, just get this sticky. Sticky's never good. This is the button, so this one needs to be working. It looks to be clean. Um, you see a little bit around here. See the little rainbow colors? Maybe it's slightly inside there. Let's make sure it's fine. So let's go ahead, just clean it up inside there. We'll let it soak inside, and as we're letting it do that, man, there you go. So this is what it looks like under the microscope. Let's clean this up. We're looking at the power button area. We're looking at the pins. We need to see shine throughout all the pins, which we do. We see a pretty good indicator that all of them seem to be shining. If they weren't shining um, from that damage, then most likely, um, especially maybe the last pin here, um, and that can, again, corrode and damage out there. But this looks very healthy for the most part. You don't have to swap anything. Uh, let's go ahead and flip it over. Let's scan the rest of the board, but let's at least look at this area. I just don't want this anywhere near the border C32, so. There we go. I have nothing plugged in now. So no keyboard, no touchpad, um, just enough for the power and the fans. And um, touch ID's out because I did uh, leave it, excuse the mess, well, I did leave this out. No Touch ID plugged in. Let's plug it in. And obviously if I'm showing this, you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> still gonna be there, still gonna have the same problem. So we're gonna plug it in and it's gonna power on like it always does. And you still get the same issue over again. So it still thinks that the button is plugged in even though there is no button plugged in. So if we go back to our microscope and we look over here, <laughs> there's also a little bit of corrosion on this side. We're gonna show our board view here and we're gonna be taking a look a little bit further because something still isn't right. And this is our Touch ID connection and you can see in the corner you got your 1V8 um, and around here this also, the UT520 also got impacted. Let's see here what's going on. Uh, this is right exactly on the other side here. So you still have a, a PV1V8 Touch ID, so it's still pretty much the same type of thing. And you have, I think, this whole entire line over here as to do a Touch ID. Yep, so, or at least something. Touch ID boost, boost, 
Now PMU on and off, interesting. So that's even there. Uh, touch ID, touch ID. So power button, touch ID, um, all on that side. So we got this line um, still damaged. So most likely uh, this would still be it because you still have a short along this line. Okay, and it's still a little bit dirty underneath. It's not too bad. So you can see a little bit on the side there. It's still a little bit dirty. Um, so let's make sure, no problem. Clean this. And another good way to do it is um, we can also just put some, some flux and we can put some solder and that will be very nice. Clean off the rest, which looks a lot better. All right, so the area looks good. Um, we were able to clean it properly. So uh, all the solder looks good, the area looks good, everything underneath looks good. Okay, so the board looks good now. We fixed up the area very well, especially on the back. So it shouldn't be shorting anymore, and that short would be causing it to do what it's doing. It thinks it's being pressed. Um, and activated there. So that should be eliminated now. Let's go ahead and plug it back in, uh, put everything back, and um, let's go ahead and test it. So I pretty much fully put this back because uh, I think it's going to work. We did everything we were supposed to do there. Um, so let's see if it powers on and works with... Um, okay, Apple logo. We got no lettering underneath there, which is fantastic. That's awesome. I guess I didn't really have to plug it and charge it. Okay, and we got a battery, it's holding. Now, the thing is, I want to press the power button. I'm going to see if I can power this off with the power button. So let's do that. Um, we're showing Activate Mac because we need to install an OS on there, which we can do right after. And boom, okay. So now let's also test this to make sure it powers on. Um, sometimes if you just look at it, it might power on because it's so sensitive. So let's go ahead and touch it, and boom, there it goes. So we got the Touch ID power button to work itself, so it looks to be fine. So I connect it to the internet. Whenever you do wipe it, it gets you um, back to this uh, screen and you have to pretty much activate it again. It needs to hit the, the Apple server, which is awesome, isn't it? Don't you guys love that? We all do. So now I can go to recovery mode and here you go. So let's make sure we can at least see the drive and stuff here, disk utility, which we can. Okay, so we see Macintosh HD. So we have 500 gigs and this is completely empty. So we just need to install another OS, which we can do, it's no problem. So everything looks to be good and we're all good to go. So anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed doing the repair on the A2442 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro and we were able to fix the Touch ID line. It was an interesting liquid spill. Really, you see a lot of different things, so every repair is completely different. If you guys are interested in checking out the repairs, I actually have a lot, a whole playlist. I think I just threw all of them there. If you guys want to check out all the MacBook repairs that we do, we also have data recoveries and all that other stuff. So if you guys are interested in sending in your device, you can check out our links in the description below on how you can mail in your device. You can go to labfix.com and we do have a mail and repair option for for you guys, right? To help you guys out with any MacBook repair, MacBook data recovery, MacBook liquid spill, anything else there. So hope you guys are watching. Take care. Bye.